Dear viewers, welcome to the YouTube channel H2O Chemistry. In our last video, we have learned that the topic atomic radius. So let us have a small recap on that. So it is comes under the heading called periodic properties. So what we have seen is periodic properties, right? So in this, we are going to talk about the introduction of the atomic radius. The conclusion what we arrived in the last video, we are going to see first and then we are going to continue the next topic called ionic radius. So let us watch. Now, the word atomic radius means the distance between the center of the nuclei and the electron present in the outermost shell. The distance between these two, if we calculate, that is called the atomic radius. So now we will see the trend alone. So how do you say trend trend in period? So how it's vary? How the atomic radius vary in the period? Yeah, vary the when you go along the period, the size of the atom get decreases. So atomic radius also decreases. So that is the first conclusion we have made. And then second one in group so when you go down the group what will happen when you go down the group usually the energy shell gets added k l m and like that energy shell gets added so the atomic size gets increases so the atomic radius also increases so this is the conclusion we can make so now in this uh, video we are going to talk about the term called ionic radii ionic radii okay what does it mean by ions okay we will see the meaning of this first so the first meaning is the plural form of plural form of radius is called radii what do you mean by ion ion is nothing but a charged atom or group of atoms is called ions so we know that ions are generally are of two types we know that cations and anions so cations are positively charged electrons are negatively charged so we know this concept my dear children so we, if you we, if you calculate the radius of ion then it is called ionic radii then it is called ionic radii there are two kind of uh, ions cations and anions see in our uh, ninth standard itself we have studied that what is what forms cation and what kind of element forms anion so let us now write cations see we know that elements can be classified majorly into three different types one we call metals next one we call non metals the next one we call metalloids so we talk about these two now the metals usually have one two three electrons in the last shell whereas in the non metal 4 5 6 and 7 electrons it's in the last shell right now the outermost shell of an atom if an atom has eight electron in its last shell it is stable configuration we learned right it is stable configuration now whereas metals have one comma two comma three electron in the last shell tell me if the metal has one electron in the last shell it has to gain 7 electrons 
to fulfill this eight electrons in the last shell to acquire a stable configuration. Now, which process is easy? Losing one is easy or gaining seven is easy? Yes, you are you're right. Losing one electron is easy process when compared to gaining of seven electrons. So, what happens? Let us see. So, let us take an example of this kind. Sodium atom. Right? So, we know that sodium has how many uh, electron in the last shell? The electronic configuration we will write. 2, 8, 1. So, this is the configuration of sodium atom. Right? So, the electronic configuration. E C we will write. Electronic configuration. 2, 8, 1. So, when sodium loses this last shell electron. So, only one electron when it is lost. What will happen? Sodium it is 2, 8, 1. So, when it loses the last electron, it will become 2, 8. So, plus 1 electron. Okay, what is the charge it will carry? That is another point. What is the charge it will carry? We know that a neutral atom of sodium has a sodium atom we write like this. So, it has 11 protons and 11 electrons. So, when you talk about the net charge is 0. But now compare to this now. After the sodium has lost electron, it will become, it has only 10 electrons. Now, it has 11 protons. Now, in this case, what is the net charge? Now, we will see the net charge, my dear children. Uh, 11 proton the sodium has. But now, after losing one electron, it has only 10 electrons. You could see 2, 8 only. So, 11 plus and 10 minus. If you calculate that, it will become 1 plus. So, 1 plus is the net charge. That's what we will write. Got it? So, when an atom loses electron, it will become cation. Which atom loses electron? Which type of element loses electrons? The metals lose electrons and form positively charged ions we call cations so metals usually form usually forms cations so next we will write the metals usually forms cations so the conclusion what we have done here is metals usually forms form a cation by losing by losing the by losing electrons of lost shell right to form cation this is what we have learned conclusion right so let us uh, do in the geometric representation model so that you will get an idea about it little bit more let us see okay what is happening there so first we will write the sodium atom configuration na 1123 the electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 1 so let me draw a diagram first we have 11 protons the nucleus and then we have two electrons in the k shell the next shell has 8 electrons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. The last shell has 1 electron, right? So then losing of electron takes place. Losing of electron takes place. So the configuration is 2, 8, 1. It's neutral sodium atom. What about after losing? So again, there is no change in the nucleus. So 11 protons. And then we have a 2 electron in the K shell. Whereas we have 8 electrons in the, in the next shell called L shell. See, in this case, if the last shell has gained 7 electrons, it will become 8. Whereas, if this electron is lost, this next shell it has 8 electrons. So, losing is easy process. 
gaining 7 is tough process, losing 1 is easy process. That's why sodium loses 1 electron plus 1 electron. Now, what else we can find out from this picture? Just to see this picture, you will get more idea about it. The size of an atom, that's what here, that is uh, when you talk about the charge, the charge of the sodium atom here is Na, whereas here it is Na plus. So let me write the charge of an atom is 1 plus. That's what earlier we have seen. And then the electronic configuration is 2 comma 8, right? It is sodium ion, sodium ion. So what we have seen here is this. When an atom lost electron, the size of an atom gets decreases. Am I right? Size of an atom gets decreases. So we will we will write the conclusion again. Conclusion is when an atom loses electrons, the size so fan atom decreases or when an atom forms cations when atom forms cations the size of cation is smaller than the than the yes you're right neutral atom right check out these two structures you will come to know right so the size of an atom decreases or when the atom forms in cation the cation is smaller than that of the neutral atom smaller than that of the neutral atom so this concept you should know to to study about this ionic radii okay so the next concept is formation of chloride ion or anion see and ions are two types cations and anions so in this category we are going to talk about the chloride ion formation so let us uh, write one by one so how this chlorine in the atom what is the electronic configuration everything so the chlorine atomic number is 17 mass number is 35.5 right now the electronic configuration if you talk about 8 2 comma 8 comma 7 it is electronic configuration so the last shell has seven electrons uh, so which is easy process losing seven is easy or gaining one electron is easy gaining one electron is easy so that is what we have learned so the uh, element like non metals so you could see this um, um, uh, structure my dear children the elements non metals usually have four five six seven electrons in the last shell so the in this in our case chlorine chlorine has got seven electrons in the last shell so the non metals usually have seven electron in the last shell normally usually have four comma five comma six seven electrons so in this our case in our case chlorine has seven electrons in the last shell right so gaining one electron is very simple so let us talk about in a um, equation manner the chlorine gains an electron got it so what will happen that's what an idea so it has a configuration of 2 comma 8 comma 7 so if it gains an electron what will happen what will happen the chlorine so we will we don't want to write anything now now chlorine has electronic configuration of 2 comma 8 comma 8 now so now we know that the neutral chlorine atom neutral chlorine atom has 17 proton and 17 electron so the net charge is zero now after gaining the one electron what will happen what will happen 17 proton there is no change in the electron protons but the electron is added so totally if you count there is an 18 electrons you could see 2 plus 8 10 10 plus 8 18 so the net charge 17 plus 18 minus so it will become 1 minus so the net charge is 1 minus so what the charge I want to write here is Cl1 minus. So it is called anion. Now let me draw the geometrical representation of the chloride ion formation. 
formation of chloride ion so now let us write like this so it has a 17 protons 2 electron in the K shell and then 8 electrons in the M N uh, L shell the next shell we have 7 electrons so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 right plus electron so it has lost from sodium so when the sodium lost electron the chlorine gains that electron so when the electron is added what will happen to the chlorine atom so it is chlorine atom the configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 7 now let us go to the next one that is um, 17 protons 2 electron in the K shell the next is 8 electron in the L shell and then the last shell as again 8 electrons now the hole becomes 1 minus as I told you the charge is 1 minus it is Cl minus ion otherwise called chloride anion or ion chloride ion now now look at this picture and what else we can say? What else we can say? The conclusion what is? The conclusion, the first conclusion, number one is non-metals usually gain electrons to form anions. To form anions. What is the next conclusion, my dear children? Conclusion number two. So, what is the next conclusion? Compare the first conclusion. Second conclusion, when an atom loses electron, the size of an atom gets decreases. Now, come to this idea. Compare these two structures. When an atom gains electron, what will happen? The 17 protons can attract only 17 electrons. But in this case, it has a 18 electrons that means it has a configuration of uh, 2 comma 8 comma 8 so that indicates what that indicates what that indicates what 18 minus we have so the 17 proton may not hold firmly all the 18 electrons so it will get enlarged the last shell gets enlarged right so that is happening during this so when an atom loses or gains in this case gains electrons the size of an atom increases now it's very simple idea if you blow a balloon the balloon size will enlarge so you are blowing you are blowing electron into the atom so the size gets increases right what about when you when you release air from the balloon the size gets decreases look at this concept when the electron is expelled from an atom the size gets decreases so imagine a balloon blowing air inside and blowing air outside right these two concepts are essential to identify the formation of cation and anion in terms of size so that is the first conclusion second conclusion or else how do you write or else how do you write look at this when an atom forms cations the size of an cation is smaller than the neutral atom what about here when an atom when an atom forms anion the size of anion is larger than the neutral atom right right so how do I write very simple very simple the major conclusion we will draw here is 
the final conclusion is this size of sodium atom right is larger than size of sodium ion similarly a size of chlorine atom which is less than the size of chloride ion so when you learn these two concept clearly the uh, identification of uh, ionic radii is much simple got it so this is the main concept you should learn my dear children so it will be a very good idea if you learn this right let us go to the next idea that is ionic radii so ionic radii so let us uh, go back to the diagram and we will see what is there in the uh, sodium uh, ion uh, let us see see here uh, now the nucleus uh, so show some influence on this last electron so from the center of this nucleus and the last shell electron this is we call electron cloud because after forming electron the last shell does not have a single electron remember it has a, a for about eight electrons so we call it is an electron cloud electron cloud now because we have a much electron more electron density more electron density so in this case the ions has uh, electron more electron density at the last shell so that is the idea we should know so the nucleus have an influence on the electron cloud of last shell so how do you mention this ionic radii the distance from the center of the nucleus of an ion up to the point where it agree where the nucleus excretes influence on the electron cloud of an ion electron cloud of an ion so now if you know the electron cloud meaning so the writing the uh, definition is very simple so let us come to the chloride ion too so the chloride ion right the nucleus from the distance distance from the center of the nucleus of an ion up to the point so from up from here to here up to the point where the electron cloud where the electron cloud is there it exceeds some influence it exceeds some influence so that distance is called ionic radii so how do you represent this in a manner so we will write the definition the distance from the center of the nucleus of uh, of the ion right of the ion up to the point up to the point so this point up to this point where the nucleus excretes its influence so till where it exceeds its influence right influence on the electron cloud on the electron cloud this is called ionic radii this is called ionic radii got it so this is the definition we have learned now we will come to the last conclusion my dear children that is very simple idea that is a uh, what about along the period and and on the group so this is what we are going to talk about now we know that along the period the size of an atom gets decreases the last class itself we have learned that along the period the size of an atom gets decreases so when you look at the periodic table lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen in this case right along the period the size of a uh, nuclear charge gets increases by 1 and then the electron is also added in the last shell so when you go across this period the size gets decreases right when the size gets decreases when you remove an electron for all the atoms the size also will get get increases so the ionic radii is much similar to atomic radii much similar to 
atomic radii because after losing one electron it will shrink right again the next atom also will shrink already it is having a smaller one right so uh, look at this uh, we will understand more about it so now you could see this picture you can have a clear idea about it now please watch this right now the lithium in picometer they mentioned that means 10 to the power of minus 12 meters what is it now lithium atom is larger whereas lithium ion is smaller similarly sodium atom is larger but but sodium ion is smaller so when compare this similarly fluorine fluorine atom is smaller whereas fluoride ion is larger similarly chlorine ion is smaller chloride ion is larger so this is an idea my dear children what it but when you go along the period size gets decreases you could see the size of uh, lithium and size of fluorine so this this is the first element in the second period this is the um, second last element that means seventh element in the um, sorry, eighth element in the sorry, seventh element in the uh, second period. So in this, you could compare the sizes. So it's a very small. If you remove one electron, it will become further small. So what will happen? The ionic radii also will decrease along the period. It will decrease, decreases. What about down the group? You could see this picture again. The lithium and sodium are down, right? So compare these two. So when the one more electron, okay, one more energy level is added. So compare these two, right? So what will happen? So now uh, let me draw one more diagram to show you this how it works. Now lithium, the atomic number is three, so a two comma one. The sodium atomic number is eleven, so it is two comma eight comma one. So after losing this, after losing this. Compare with the nucleus. So even it is a nucleus, the distance is much smaller for the lithium, much larger for the sodium. So when you compare to the potassium, what will happen? If it is a nucleus, this is a nucleus two eight eight one. So when this losses, so the distance is larger. You could see the distance, right? So when you go down the group, what will happen? The group when you go down the group, the Ionic radii gets increases. This is the point, my dear children. Thank you so much for watching. It takes time, but is worth knowing, my dear children. Learn the concepts clearly. It will be very helpful in future. Thank you. If you like this video, subscribe and click the bell button to get the notification instantly. Share it to your friends. Let them learn. Thanks for watching.